Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new week of Road to TCG Worlds 2016. Now there's only what like four weeks until Worlds, I'm really really excited and this week I am going to be featuring the deck that was played by Paul Johnston, my good friend Paul Johnston, whom um, got top four at US Nationals. So if already featured one deck out of the top four, we're gonna feature another one. And yeah, um, Water Toolbox is a deck I had not featured yet on my channel, so I'm really excited to to showcase it to you guys. Um, I'm sure you've all heard about it, and you've heard about how Paul won his top four match against probably one of the worst matchups against this deck with Vespico and Valplum by using Lysander three times in a row. So, having said that, let's review the deck, shall we? Um, Paul's deck obviously focuses on Seismitoad EX and powering it up, but using Grenade Hammer more than Quaking Punch, um, 180 HP, a ton of HP, 3 retreat cost, but that really doesn't matter because Manaphy EX provides <coughs> free retreat to absolutely every single Pokemon that has any water energy attached to it. So even though Manaphy EX can be a liability with low HP, um, you really don't you really never attack with it, honestly, and there's also the fact that Mana VX, if you're ever going to attack with it, it's probably against Trevenant because Mineral Pump heals 30 damage from each of your benched Pokemon, and um, by or coincidentally, Trevenant Break deals 30 damage to every Pokemon, and um, Trevenant from XY deals 20 damage to benched Pokemon, so Mana VX can be a really nice tool card against that deck and Rough Seas is another really crucial card for the for this deck's strategy as with free retreat you get very you get a lot of longevity longevity with your Pokemon. Now you have more techie Pokemon with Ridge Ice. Um, Resistance Blizzard can be really really nice given the right situation it can completely shut down some decks such as Dark Ride Giratina if they're not running Hydreigon and even then you can um, play around it and heal off with rough seas and everything Then we have one Glacian EX, Crystal Ray Another option against Vespigo and Valplum As Crystal Ray pretty much shuts them down Unless they start using Shaman EX to Shaman Cycle But, um, I don't know, in the right situations Crystal Ray can really put your opponent in a, in a bit of a pickle And then we have Articuno, which its attack is nothing too special, you flip coins to deal damage, but with uh, Delta Plus you get an extra prize card if Articuno knocks out a Pokemon, and given the low HP of the Night March Pokemon, Articuno is a really nice card to be able to trade with them more, more efficiently. And finally we have two Shaman EX in order to draw our cards, and one Hoopa EX to find Mana Feast, to find Seismitoads, and potentially the Glacian. Now in terms of supporter cards, we have nothing too out of the ordinary for Sycamore, 2N, 2 Lysander, 1 AC, 1 Hexmaniac, and 1 Zerosic, so all of them utility or draw cards. Then we have our 4 Verseeker and 4 Ultra Ball, 3 Trainer's Mail, but the main, the main card that allows this deck to function really really well is Max Elixir. Um, I'm sure you're all aware by now of what Max Elixir does. Um, look at the top 6 cards of your deck, and if you find an energy, you get to attach it to one of your benched Pokemon. Really really nice to power up everything, and when combined with energy switch, you can power up whatever is active. Like, no energy goes wasted, even if you, it ends up being attached to a Hoopa, for example. Um, the energy switch allow you to, to make sure they're always on the right Pokemon. And then we have um, 1 Megaphone, 1 Super Rod, 4 Rough Seeds, which are really really nice for this deck. Um, when combined as well with Fighting Fury Belt, makes your Pokemon last a very, very long time. And we have our 11 beautiful Holo Water Energy. So that's the deck. Um, the main strategy is to attack with a Grenade Hammer, deal a ton of damage. You get to heal off the damage, you get to heal off Seismitoad. You have Energy Acceleration, Free Retreat. You can even lock down your opponents with Quaking Punch. So yeah, there's a ton of options, a ton of versatility. And it's really easy to see why why such a deck um, made made top four at a tournament like this one. So yeah, let's get into our two games of the day. Hopefully, we find some really good opponents. 
and yeah we'll see i'm really excited to use this tag it's definitely one of my f i don't know i've always favored water pokemon like they've always been some of my favorites and i mean i won nationals with greninja which is a water pokemon blastoise and squirtle has always been one of my favorite pokemon mudkip and swampert as well so i don't know i always favor water type decks water type pokemon for some bizarre reason um i used to love the old blastoise ex steel ex luga ex deck um i won a few city championships back in the day with for alligator delcady i don't know i mean i'm not opposed to using any card any card that allows me to win that's a good card but there's always some better cards than other and water pokemon have always had a place in the meta game i think so that's really nice and yeah from steam siege i'm actually really excited to take a look at volcanion ex and try it out maybe not for worlds doesn't seem that good for worlds but potentially i don't know potentially for excuse me potentially for for afterworlds okay so we have a pretty strange hand um, I'm gonna play down the Hoopa and now I will find Seismitoad but since we are up against Night March Vespiquen huh nah Glacian not really I'm gonna find Shaman Seismitoad side. no I'm not even gonna find Shaman I don't even want to bother with Shaman. Um, ideally, I would actually. Huh. Ideally, I would actually. Okay, I'm gonna retreat into Hoopa. And I'm gonna play the energy switch onto Hoopa so that I can free retreat it next turn. But yeah, ideally I power up Articuno before he gets to evolve. Now I can find I can find Articuno now. The megaphone. Hmm. Okay. I'm gonna get rid of the megaphone and the Lysander. I will find Articuno now. Seems like a really important card. And Probably my Max Elixir will go into Articuno because one Max Elixir next turn and an energy drop allows me to power up either Seismito DX's Quaking Punch or Articuno's Triage. Yeah, I'm actually gonna shame it. It's a bit risky because of because of Lysander and things like that, but okay. It's fine. Um Hmm. Gonna leave it at that. I'm not gonna touch the Fighting Fury belt just yet. I wanna see how big a turn he gets and hmm. Wow. So it's Night March with Forest of Giant Plants. So that's really strange. Wow, and he actually passes, okay. So the unfortunate thing here is that we do not get to um, we do not get to KO Vespiquen. But what we do get to do is man, I definitely don't want to end my opponent. So I'm gonna keep the verse seeker so that I can seek a more. And this is what I'm gonna do. I am going to attach an energy to size me toad. Now I will attach the Fighting Fury Belt to Seismitoad. I'm gonna use Ultra Ball, discard these two guys. Um, find Glacian because I definitely will not be using Glacian this game. Well, yeah, no, I'm not gonna use Glacian. I'm gonna super out back the energy because I could have used N, but I don't want to give my opponent a, a better hand so I'm actually gonna sacrifice some resources myself in order to keep my opponent in that bad position and now we can find max elixir or energy switch in order to start using quaking punch and really lock down my opponent um, I will move the energy from the hoopa onto the seismic toad for sure 
gonna play my stadium and with this quaking punch i don't know i feel really comfortable now my opponent didn't get to use compressor didn't get to do anything really so i think we can simply quaking punch ourselves to victory urban top decks the sycamore actually <coughs> has one pokemon in the discard pile but that's not a big deal he cannot get more pokemon in the discard pile at the moment and i don't know how big a vespiguin line he uses but I guess his best play is probably to to wait until I KO enough Pokemon and then use and then try and get some KOs with Vespiguin. But it's gonna be a while until that happens. It's really gonna be a while. Now I could verse Seeker here myself. And Lysander KO the combi, which seems like my best play, honestly does seem like my best play so I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna keep my opponent under a lock as long as I possibly can get my first prize card um, a stadium I do have an energy to power up another quaking punch I have sycamore for more draw so yeah things are looking pretty good now things are definitely looking really really good my opponent flips heads on bird, so actually not the most competitive Night March Vespiguin. <laughs> Definitely nothing compared to to the US Nationals winning deck. Um, my opponent will up to to start attacking with B Revenge, but at this point in time he doesn't get the one hit KO on Seismitoad. Like and nowhere near close. What I could do is retreat into Articuno and KO the Vespiquen that way. I mean, I would need one head flip. I would need one head flip, but I think it's worth it. I definitely think it's worth it. So I'm gonna retreat. I will give my opponent a free turn, but one out of three. I only need one out of three. Tails, tails, heads. Wow. <laughs> I got really nervous there, but we KO Vespiquen, we get two prize cards, we do give my opponent a free turn of item cards, but that's a trade I was willing to do, especially after, if my opponent doesn't use N, I can verse Seeker and KO the combi, I can't do that, and I can either KO with Seismitoad or KO with Articuno. Now that's not a possibility because he just evolved, but he actually attaches a basic <laughs> energy, okay. And he's going to verse a Seeker for a Sycamore, that's fine. Um, that means no Lysander. The fact that he already attached an energy means no... no nothing really. Um, it generally means he's not gonna do any damage at this point in time. Yes, he's gonna get an explosive turn, but just take a look at this. If I get an energy off of a max elixir and I manage to to get another energy next turn. Well there you go. Um, okay, I'm gonna heal size me toad. I'm gonna play the max elixir. I whiff. Okay. But yeah, basically I'm gonna be in a situation where it doesn't matter what's active as long well yeah as long I'm gonna use Sycamore as long as I hit an energy I win next turn that's all that needs to happen as long as I hit an energy next turn I win because um, grenade Grenade Hammer actually can KO anything. Now, I'm gonna keep the Trainer's Mail because if he ends me down to one card, that's one out. Whereas if I use it right now, yes, I make my deck one card thinner, but Trainer's Mail access up to four, uh, gets you access, um, gets you access to up to four cards. So it's definitely better not to play it. And yeah, I'm just gonna go for the Tri-Edge. Hopefully, yep, yeah, there's one heads. 
so that's more than enough to KO the Punkabu. Get, also, get ourselves another two prizes, and now it comes down to can we get one energy? We get a Max Elixir and an energy off of our prizes, so that's two really good cards where if my opponent uses N at this point in time and ends us to down to one card, <coughs> A, he might not even have enough Pokemon to KO Articuno. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yep, he definitely doesn't have enough Pokemon to KO Articuno. And he will not use Lysander. And even if he finds enough Pokemon to KO Articuno, he's not even gonna end. So that's absolutely game. Because we can KO Joltix, we can KO Vespiquen, we can KO anything my opponent puts into play. Um, Seismitoad can KO. Beer revenge is just enough to get the KO, but as you can see, my hand is completely filled with energy, so it really, yep. Not, not we didn't play against the most competitive night march deck, that's for sure. But what are you gonna do? I cannot handpick the level of my opponents. But yeah. I mean, it's always nice to beat Night March, isn't it? Poor Night March players, like, it's the most hated deck, and I don't dislike Night March, and I don't hate Night March, and honestly, with my Greninja deck, I would happily, like, really, really happily play eight Night March decks on day two of Worlds. Like, I would be the happiest person to see to see Night March every single round at Worlds. I would feel really comfortable with that. Um, Night March Vespiquen probably a, a little bit harder to go up against, but without the Mew, without basic energies, meh, I don't know. Like, if Worlds is tomorrow, or was tomorrow, I would play Greninja for sure. Especially after yesterday I won a little tournament where there were so many, there were, it was a 10 person tournament, <coughs> and there were four Garbodors. I don't know. I I just I'd happily play Night March every single round at Worlds. I would happily do that. So I'm I'm actually glad that Karen was not printed. I am actually glad Karen was not printed because that doesn't scare off the Night March players. <coughs> and they even get a buff with the thing that returns special energy and the Pokemon Ranger thingy. Okay. Okay, 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 so how do I make the best out of this hand? I do get to go first. I didn't pay attention to what my opponent is potentially using. Um, I'm gonna use Ultra Ball. I'm gonna get rid of the, nope, the other Ultra Ball and the Verse Seeker. And with it, I hope to find Hoopa. Yep, there we go, so that's perfect. And with Hoopa, I will find a Shaman, I will find two Seismitoads, because I don't know what my opponent is playing. Well, no, one Seismitoad, one Mana Fee, and one Shaman. Yeah, always need Mana Fee, definitely always need Mana Fee. So, there's Seismitoad, there's Mana Fee. Now I get to play two Max Elixirs with full lots of hitting energy. Um, it'd be really nice to hit both but it's not 100% necessary I do hit both so that's really really nice and now let's see what we get off of our trainer's mail um, we actually get some really nice cards I'm gonna keep the sycamore and now I'm going to play the shaman so we get a really really explosive start which is really really nice um, we actually find another Max Elixir and we hit it now the question here is ideally I wanted to attach an energy and use energy switch but for now I'm just gonna end um, I don't think my Shaman is that threat of getting KO'd next turn we do find energy to potentially retreat but I didn't find much else after that Huh. And no stadium, no... Wow. Okay. So the question is, do I retreat? Yeah, I definitely retreat. And I pass a turn. 
Now let's see what my opponent does. Got four energy into play on turn one. <coughs> That's really sick. That's really, really sick. Oh, wow. We're actually up against Houndoom. Okay. I will take that. Um, uh, wow, it's actually Houndoom Pyroar. So, my opponent uses Verse Seeker. Probably a mill, a mill, a milling deck. Okay. So now that changes things. That definitely changes things. Um, Pyro might be the damage preventing one. So yeah, I think going for price cards is my best play here. I think going for price cards is my best play. So I'm gonna grenade hammer, get the KO. I will place the damage onto Manaphy and onto Hoopa, I guess. And grab myself two KOs. Okay. Energy switch, that's great. And that's really great as well. Well, then is less great, but the energy switch is really important. Um, yes, he removes an energy, no big deal. Yes, he might mill the top two cards of my off of the top of my deck. That's once again not a big deal. I will one hit KO the Houndoom. What's he going to do? Is he going to attack? Pinches another Houndoom. Yep, he's actually going to deal 50 damage to me. Which really doesn't make a difference. Um, this will probably be a really, really quick game. Probably going to be a really quick game. I actually find the energy... Another energy switch, rather. Not the energy switch, but another energy switch. Not going to use then. Um... I guess I will bench Regi's because Regi's well it cannot touch that thing either, but that's fine. Generally not scared at this point in time. And I can place the damage onto those two Pokemon and my opponent has no cards in hand, so this will probably be a really quick game. Probably going to be a really quick game. We find a Sycamore and a trainer's mail. Um, I would have loved to find more energy. But you really can't ask for it too too much. Evan is using the pyro thingy. That's completely fine because we actually find the rough seas, which is nice. Gonna use it. And then we have the Hex Maniac, so we can actually KO the Pyro with Grenade Hammer. Place the damage onto Red Ice and onto Manaphy so that it gets healed off. And yeah. Even if he finds another Pyro. We get to use Verse Seeker and use Hex Maniac again. So, <laughs> 4 or 5 turn game. Evolves into Mega Houndoom and passes. So, that's game. <laughs> really, really easy game. There's my opponent's concession, and let's find another game because. Today's games, unfortunately, have not been very competitive, but despite that, you can see how well the deck is running. Um, Pulse Engine is really, really streamlined, really, really good. And yeah, no complaints from my end on that. We did start Shaman, but even then we got 4 energy into play despite that Shaman start, so... Really can't ask for much more. You really can't ask for much more. So, now... Now, now, now. Now, let's see what we find. Hopefully a better opponent this time around. Um, not better, just with a more competitive deck. Fighting and water. So, Galad, Kalade, sorry. Kalade Octillery, potentially. Um, Archump Octillery potentially. Neither of those sounds too scary, honestly. Generally it doesn't sound too too scary. Um, we get a pretty nice hand except for the fact that we don't have another Pokemon in play. My opponent actually has Lucario. Okay. So I'm gonna use the Max Elixir. I do hit an energy. Now I have a choice here. I can focus on Reggie Ice. Or I can start powering powering up Psychic Toad, and I think that's a better strategy at the moment. 
just powering up Seismic Toad because any like any damage Lucario deals I get to heal it off um, <laughs> the Zerusic comes back immediately now I'm gonna use Ultra Ball get rid of the Zerusic and one verse Seeker I guess I will find Hoopa and with Hoopa I will go find Manaphy and Shaman. Manaphy and Shaman. Um, the other Seismitoad is prized, so I'm actually glad I didn't discard this Seismitoad because I was considering it. But I will bench these two guys and then I will use Shaman for four more cards. I use it before Trainer's Mail. Um, it's not too big of a difference. But yeah, we get a pretty okay hand. I actually find another Max Elixir. So I'll definitely keep that. And with Verse Seeker, we can simply end next turn. To conserve energy, we have our Stadium to heal off. But actually, with the Max Elixir, that's perfectly understandable. And I'm just gonna pass here. Our first turn, so we cannot attack, but we got two energy into play. Um, it's actually a Garchomp deck with artillery, you would assume, and a Lucario. Huh. So, I would love, <coughs> I would absolutely love to find. Well, <laughs> that ruins my plans. I was gonna say, I would absolutely love to find a uh, Fighting Fury Belt next turn. Because I could have used I could have used Grenade Hammer to deal 140 and then get a KO with Quaking Punch. Oh wow, my opponent actually uses Hex Maniac. So pretty bad hand for my opponent, and now it makes me think twice about the end. Um unfortunately. Yeah, I definitely don't want to end him. I could Zerosic, but I'm just gonna pass. Um, he did play the X-Maniac, so I couldn't use Manaphy to retreat into my Seismitoad and lock him into not using item cards. Um, I'm not gonna play down my Stadium until I... or rather until he... he deals damage to me, there's really no point. And okay, so... I can KO the Gibble, or I generally don't know if it's better to go on the offensive or not. I think it is better to go on the offensive because Garchomp does put a ton of pressure and it can actually run and KO Seismitoad. So I'm gonna retreat into the other Seismitoad and will attach to this guy and I'm gonna grenade hammer for the KO. Um, I don't get to lock my opponent which is obviously not ideal but I do get a prize card and we get one gibble out of play but we get his only energy out of play both of those things really really good I mean I could have locked his item cards but I don't know how useful that would have been and with two seismitoads powered up we get to cycle through them with our rough seas in case he starts attacking us and things like that so it's really no big deal I will play the rough seas now just to heal my bench Pokemon. Uh, my opponent hasn't shown any signs of his hand improving, so I'm just gonna grenade hammer once again. And play the damage on Manaphy and on Reggie Ice. And grab ourselves our second prize card of the day. Which is an energy switch. Which is actually really good because in case my opponent wants to Lysander tell me. I didn't have any more energy to free retreat, but yeah, when you're up against a water toolbox deck, usually don't consider something like that, because of the fact that um, you know that with a single energy they can free retreat. Unless you know their specific energy counts, unless they have a ton of energy into play, you can definitely risk it, but at this point in the game, I don't know. But yeah, even if my opponent was going to risk something like that, we have the energy switch to compensate. So that's perfectly fine. That is perfectly, perfectly fine. Okay, so Gibble, Garchomp. 
Dual guard jump. He's only gonna turbo assault. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> perfectly, perfectly fine. He will probably attach the strong to Lucario. You would imagine. No, to himself. Okay. Um, <laughs> that makes zero sense because he has seen that I've used grenade hammer. Guard jump has 130 HP. So yeah, that literally, that play literally makes zero sense. But hey. What are you gonna do? I don't get to... I don't know. <laughs> he says nice one and GG. Okay, so GG, Panzer D. Um, thank you. I guess at that point, the uh, where the energy went didn't really matter. And yeah, spin 3 really... Mm, I don't know. 3 really easy games. So I'm gonna find a 4th for you guys gonna find a fourth a fourth um what a fourth game <laughs> sorry i'm a bit dispersed today and yeah um on last friday's video if you guys didn't watch it i definitely discussed some changes that are coming to the channel after worlds and after my because i have the world strip so Around that time, videos will definitely not be not be going up because I will be at Worlds and I want to enjoy Worlds and I want to enjoy San Francisco. And after that, <coughs> I actually have a trip to Alaska. So that's 10 days as well. So I'm gonna be hard pressed to leave like 10 videos made for or 20 videos made because I have to make VGC as well. <coughs> So around that time there won't be any videos either, or not too many. I will try my best to leave some content, but not. I won't be able to every day. And yeah, after that we will be changing the dynamic of the of the channel, of the weekly videos and things like that. So it'll be like a, a fresh start. Um, I want to improve upon the channel, of, of course. So that's the main goal. Okay, so pretty weird hand we get. Not the best, not the worst. I get to go for Hoopa though, so that's really nice. So yeah, um, there's two those there's those two hiatuses, if you will, on the channel. But thankfully, it's like at whenever when both BGC and TCG season are at their lowest or slowest rather. <coughs> Unless we get a ton of changes and a lot of things change, which I don't really, or I generally don't know, but I don't think we will be missing out on too too much. And um, apart from that, on the countdown on two worlds, I will be making a top ten or top eight or top something, um, top something list on the best options for worlds. So you can definitely look out for that. In the near future, I will be featuring like the most viable decks I believe that will be available to everyone at Worlds. And yeah, this is it. We don't have any draw supporters, so I'm just gonna pass now. Um, so yeah, I want to make that um, a previous to Worlds special because um, kind of similar to the Spring Regionals thing I did, which I think a lot of people appreciate it so I'm gonna do something diff something very similar to standard as well before worlds um, but I will only be able to do that after Steam Siege um, gets released I cannot do it beforehand and wow okay so we're both using Glaciate and things like that he actually okay so the effect on Ice Calibur is fine because I do get to free retreat between attackers um, I will attach to red. Wow, I can actually. If actually, yeah, red eyes is definitely a good Pokemon in this matchup. But for now, I'm going to start locking my opponent down on the item cards. That means he gets to miss out on the max elixirs and things like that. Uh, but I don't have any draw cards. I, I can only Quaking Punch at this point in time. It's gonna be a slow game. But yeah, I'm gonna do that before Worlds. Um, once Steam Siege is released, I will be revising Night March, Greninja, this deck once again, Trevenant, Metal, 
um, Darkrai Giratina, Darkrai Garbodor, Mega Manectric Garbodor, what else? Mega Sceptile and Volcano EX. Those are the top 10 decks I've been thinking about as of late. If you guys have any suggestions, definitely let me know. Okay, so I actually get the KO on Lugia now. Is it worth it though? Or I can Lysander and <coughs> attack the Kyurem. I think that's a lot better. I think that's a better choice. Yep, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna Grenade Hammer, place the damage on Regice Ice and Manaphy. Give my opponent a free turn of, of item cards, but if he doesn't retreat, I can actually KO Kyurem EX with the Quaking Punch, locking him down once again. If he retreats, that's perfectly fine because I do have the Berserker. He hasn't played a rough seas, I haven't played my own. So he's actually gonna glaciate. That's perfectly fine because of my rough seas. And wow, yeah, we're in a pretty pretty amazing position to be honest. Now I do get to Quaking Punch. Honor of 40 plus 40 is on an 80. Kirami X gets KO'd. My opponent gets no item cards. We get to prices. I think I forgot to use the rough seas. Yes, I did. <laughs> I got too excited. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I'm really, really sorry, guys, about that. I got, I just got really excited and a bit distracted. But yeah, those are the top 10 decks that I will probably try to feature. Um, if you guys have any suggestions, definitely let me know. I don't think too, too much changes with the new set. Not entirely sure. Maybe Cernia's Break. You can make an argument for Cernia's Break. Okay, so first off, Rough Seas. Then Max Elixir. And I whiff. Damn it. I really wanted not to whiff. Okay, I'm gonna attach. I could Lysander up the Palkia. Which I think is a really good play. I mean, I could Lysander up a gold, uh, Psyduck as well. I think Lysander and up the Palkia, well, could have just KO'd the Lugia actually, it would have been better, but I, I don't know, I just, I simply want to heal up my Seismitoad, so my brain would need an energy and a mana fee to, to get a KO right now, he actually finds Gold Dog. So Gold Dog Break transfers energy, right? That's what it does. Gold Dog Break transfers energy. So that might be a bit problematic. Yeah, I definitely should have killed Lugia. Yeah, that was really stupid of me. That was generally really, really bad. <laughs> really, really bad. Ugh. Okay. Well, I get Regia Ice attacks as well. Okay, so another rough seas, the energy switch, meh, I guess I'll use it because I'm gonna keep using Quaking Punch, so if my opponent somehow can KO the active Seismic Toad, at least I save an energy, and I'm gonna use Sycamore. <coughs> Actually, okay, so Max Elixir gonna start powering up Regice as well, well, <laughs> that's the second max elixir I whiff, so now this energy is actually really important, okay, gonna attach it to, ah, uh, nope, okay, whatever, probably shouldn't have attached it, it's fine, I have Palkia under lock, not entirely sure what, hmm, Wow, Aqua Turbo, so never mind, he can actually start getting a ton of energy into play. Gold Dog Break does transfer energy, so wow, my opponent is actually going to set up really, really nicely. Man, I really messed up. I really messed up by not KOing that Lugia. I really messed up by not KOing that Lugia, because I would be down to KOing the Shaman, and that would have been game. That definitely would have been game. So he decides to power up Lugia once again. I'm not gonna complain about that. Okay, so I get another Max Elixir. What I actually want are 
more fighting fury belts. What does Gold Duck even do? <laughs> Hydra Splash for 70. Okay, that's fine. I will take that. So, Rage Eyes can potentially win us the game as well. <coughs> I find a trainer's mail. Uh, but I let my opponent set up. That's what's terrible. That is absolutely terrible. Okay. So I'll keep the versus seeker. No. Man. Uh, I'll keep the energy switch. And then, yeah. I quaking punch for no damage and simply allow my opponent to pile up a ton of energy because he gets to use rough seas uh, this is going to be a little bit complicated as long as I KO the Lugia I should be fine and we have Seekers left, we have a Lysander left as well so <coughs> should be able to KO Lugia and then Shaman for the game. We really should be able to. Um, Pearl, Hurricane, very damaged to one of your opponent's bench. Pokemon. Yikes. So all the rough seas damage will be nullified. And yeah, I have to start attacking with Rage Ice. Definitely have to start attacking with Rage Eyes. He actually targets Shaman, interestingly. Makes sense, I guess. Does make sense. Okay, so I top the gun energy. <sighs> Boy. Okay. So I'm going to retreat into Rage Eyes to prevent any further damage. Going to transfer an energy from this Seismitoad, which can be KO'd onto the Seismitoad. And I'm going to use Sycamore. <sighs> okay, so the AC means I can actually save the Shaman. 80 damage, he only gets to heal 50, or 30 rather, so... At least I get to put more pressure onto the Palkia. 70 and 80, that's 150. From this point onwards, I 2 it KO the Palkia, which is nice. Touches a Muscle Band to the Gold Duck, switches into the Gold Duck. And Gold Duck has 140 HP. That's perfect because he's gonna transfer energy. <coughs> deal damage to my Rage Eyes, but then I get to retreat, get a KO with Seismitoad, and and remove 3 energy from play. So that's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. I do not mind that at all. Definitely do not mind that at all. So let's see what my opponent does here. I can also heal the Shaman with the AC, so yeah. Even though I messed up really badly, we're still gonna save the, the match for sure. Still gonna save the match for sure. Uh, my brand did heal, right? Probably, I don't know. But I simply retreat here onto Seismic Toad. Man, my mouse keeps messing up. I'm gonna use the AC right away. And I mean, I could Ultra Ball to get rid of. Yeah. To get rid of cards that I probably don't need. Shaman and and the stadium. And I'm gonna find Articuno, I guess. Maybe a surprise KO on Gold Duck. <laughs> or a KO on two Palkia, which nets me three prize cards. And I'm gonna place the damage onto Shaman onto Manaphy and onto the Seismitoad. I don't want Rage Eyes further damaged because I probably will be using it later on. But getting rid of 3 energy is really, really great. And he actually transferred the energy onto Glalie, so. Uh, he can't paralyze me. Damn it. <laughs> I don't want to get paralyzed. I guess that's his out, if you will. He can paralyze me. 
max potion onto the Palkia, which makes once again no sense because there is rough seas, so he should have healed the Lugia. Definitely should have healed the Lugia. Gets rid of another gold dot break, the Palkia. He has his max elixir still, so that's good for him. Finds an energy. And <laughs> attaches to Lugia, yeah. Makes no sense for him not to have used the, the max potion on Tulugia. And then my opponent concedes, so yeah. That's it guys, four games today, four really... Um, four really, like, dominant wins, if you will. The deck is running really nicely for us. Um, you can see how how nice it is to have mana feed to free retreat and everything. And yeah, that's gonna be it for me guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please leave a like if you can on the video. Um, and if you want to see more of Paul Johnston's Lysander Water Toolbox deck, definitely check out tomorrow's video in Spanish if you want to watch even more action. But Wednesday and Friday will feature English videos as well. So, thank you guys so much and bye bye.